Hello everyone, welcome to lecture number 5 of integration series. Now in today's lecture, I'm going to take a previous KVPY question. This question appeared in 2011 KVPY. So the question is integration from 0 to 2012 e raised to power cos of pi times. Now this big bracket curly bracket denotes here fractional part of x that is given by x minus gif of x. In denominator we have e raised to power cos of pi times fractional part of x plus e raised to power negative times of cos of pi times fractional part of x t of x. Now feel free to pause the video before I start the solution. Now let's see the value of the integral is i is equal to this integral. Now the first thing I can see here is since fraction part of x is present and cos is present so this function must be periodic. Now in integrals we have one special property when you have integration of periodic functions. The property says that when you have integration 0 to nt f of x d of x now this function should be periodic with period t. If this function is periodic with period t, I can write f of x plus t will be equal to f of x here. And it will be equal to n times integration 0 to t f of x d of x. Given that n should belongs to integer. Otherwise this is not true. Now here I can see fractional part of x is present. That means this function is periodic with period 1. So here the period is t is equal to 1 for this function and automatically n will become 2012. Now the value of the integration will be equal to, I can take 2012 outside. Now we have integration 0 to 1. Now we here we have e raised to power cos of, now instead of writing fractional part of x here, I can see that fractional part of x is equal to x minus gif of x. That's how we define fractional part. Now when you integrate from 0 to 1, that means x is varying from here 0 to 1. If x is varying from 0 to 1 here, greatest integer part will be 0. So immediately I can see that fractional part of x from 0 to 1 will be equal to x when x is from 0 to 1. So immediately I can replace this with uh, as pi x here. And denominator will become e raised to power cos pi x plus e raised to power minus cos pi x here d of x. Now we have one more property here. I'm going to apply kings here. Since after applying kings, the denominator will not change. So that is one sign that you have to use kings here. Now that is King's property 5, usually. The property 5 I'm going to state here. When you have integration from a to b, f of x, t of x. Now King says that if you replace x by upper limit plus lower limit minus x, immediately the value of the integration will not change. But here inside you'll get this as f of a plus b minus x, d of x, keeping the limits intact, a to b. So value value of the integration will not change, but you can write your integral like this. So here, as you can see, I'm going to apply kings here and I'm going to replace x by upper limit plus lower limit minus x, that is 1 minus x. So I'm going to show you this kings property in the next slide. So let's say this is our first equation and the second equation I'm going to write in next page. Now in the equation 1, I'm going to change x by 1 minus x here, that is the kings property and the value of the integral will remain same. So mostly I'm going to see change in changes in cos of pi x here. So let's write cos of pi x and let's see what are the changes if I change x by 1 minus x. So it will be this will become cos of pi times 1 minus x. Now I can write this as cos of pi minus pi x. Now cos of pi minus pi x that means we are landing in second quadrant. The t ratio will not change and there will be a negative sign because we are landing in second quadrant. That means I'm going to change cos of pi x by minus times cos of pi x if I apply kings here. So let's write the integral that is 2012 times integration from 0 to 1. Limits will remain intact. e raised to power minus times of cos pi x. And in denominator we have e raised to power minus times cos pi x plus e raised to power plus times cos pi x. So let's say after applying kings, we have the second equation and whenever we apply kings, we usually add these two equations. So the moment you add these two equations, you'll get this as 2i is equal to 2012 is common. Integration from 0 to 1. And I can see here denominator for both first equation and second equation is exactly same. That means in numerator, we'll get e raised to power cos pi x and plus e raised to power minus cos pi x. So that is a plus b upon a plus b. That is equal to 1 here, d of x. Now this will be equal to 2012 times difference of limit, difference of limit is 1. So 2i is equal to 2012. That means i will be equal to 1, 0, 0, 6. So that is our final answer. And that will be all.